Oh, hey guys, welcome to the best short films in the world. My name is Bobby Miller. You know, every week we look at a lot of great shorts, and this week is no different. But this week we're going to actually talk to the filmmakers in Sundance this year. So sit back and enjoy the best short films in the world. Sundance Special, part one. Sponsored by. Seriously, guys, can you sponsor my show? I, I need to pay rent. I'm here with the filmmakers behind Asshole, which I probably will have to bleep out on this show because it's a family show. We're on the bed here uh, because the rest of the place is getting fumigated, so hopefully we won't pass out. Tell us about Asshole. What's it about? The Asshole is about a guy that goes to the doctor to find out what's wrong with him, and he finds out that he is an asshole. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to put on your little ass dress and have you squeeze my nuts while I cough on you. More tell them what's the matter with you. All right, man. you really want to know what the main problem is? I'll tell you what the f main problem is. My asshole. My asshole is a torture device. I have the anus of a 79-year-old gay man. It's very uncomfortable. Do they do anal transplants? If there was like a 14 year old that died in a car accident, could I have his anus? Yeah, now you don't yeah. even have to watch the movie. Yeah, well, yeah, don't bother. Uh, how did this movie come about? Uh, it was inspired by a trip to the doctor's office and I was having problems with my butt. Been there. So, you know, I pretty much just transcribed my experience. Now, you landed a particular actor. Can you talk about this actor? His name is Gavin McInnes. He was the co creator of Vice Magazine. He's possibly the funniest person ever. Is there a question uh, you guys want me to ask you? Uh... How much did it cost? Oh, that's a good one. How much? Wait, let's pretend that I thought of that. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, I really want to know how much did your film cost? You, I'm not answering that. Fifteen hundred dollars. Is that true? Yes, it's true. That's a steal. Guys, tell me a little bit about your production company, Last Pictures. Uh, Last Pictures is a company we started a year or two ago. So we do like branded content, like web video and stuff, uh, for different companies. We started the company with uh, two other guys we uh, met at NYU. Dan Burke, who is our executive producer and a wonderful, wonderful I Jew. I talk with Dan, he's a great guy. He's a great Jew. Bobby Olson, who I actually grew up with and we both came to NYU. And uh, he's also a wonderful dude. He's an actor, writer, director. Oh. So we're here with uh, Dumb Bunny Productions. These two guys are Dumb Bunny. Oh, so and who are you? Oh, I, I don't, I just drove him over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, I, I, I was the producer of the short film, Abby Cancelled. It's about a dinner party gone bad. It a takes place. dinner party gone awry. Essentially, uh, there, there's a dinner party with three couples in Brooklyn taking place, and one of the couples drops out at the last minute, and then the other two couples don't know each other at all, and it just gets horribly awkward. Abby Cancelled. What? We are going to this dinner. It's going to be weird. These are your f***ing friends. I'm hoping to uh, break into the entertainment industry. Well, there's nothing entertaining about it. Voulez-vous français? Voulez-vous coucher? Honey. It looks like you pissed your pants. And Abby's pregnant. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. Oh! Oh my god! Um, do you guys want any pizza? I have some leftover pizza here. Um, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, it's okay. You guys want yeah, just say it before we got it. Anna Maria's it's it's from Anna from. Maria's. Ah. Nick Koch from Madison, Ohio writes, I'm working on a documentary and I was wondering, what does it take to get into Sundance? You gotta sleep with Robert Redford, I think. Is that what it is? Is that what it is? Jessica, yeah. I don't know you gotta tell us. I don't know. <laughs> He's an attractive yeah. man. That's for, that's for sure. How does he look close up? Pretty good. I mean, just I'm waiting to the director's brunch. <laughs> yeah, but back to your question, like, what does it take to get into Sundance? I don't think there's any strategy you can come up with except just there's to nothing? to I make know, something you feel really strongly about. I and really, yeah. did you send in candy with the DVD or something? <laughs> or? That kind of strategy? Yeah. Yeah. Did Let no me send candy. in. You did. Yeah, I sent a bunch of candy in. And Oops, then, sorry. oh, they got a call. Second. 
<laughs> it's red. Hey, mom, what's up? <laughs> All right, we'll just. I got this. I got an interview. Well, I I can't talk. That's fine. I'll... So your music is in this film. Let's not beat around the bush here. It's a band, but you know, it's like Jessica and I are take on these alter egos, Turbo and Wild Ginger. We've made uh, four videos, music videos. Okay, guys, anything else you want to say? We have one minute of tape left. Just say it. This is a go crazy, guys. Thanks, Bobby, for having us on the show. You're welcome. Thank you, Annie Vogel. Tune in next Thursday, January 22nd, for part two of our Sundance special, featuring exclusive footage from Sundance itself. Visit our website, thebestsharefilmsintheworld.com, and call me. Tell me what you think of Sundance, and you could get on the show. That was great, wasn't it? I was still going. Wasn't that great? <coughs> 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 Hi, uh, my name is Bobby Miller, and you're watching The Best Short Films in the World, a show that is dedicated to bringing you the best shorts every week while I'm stuck in my apartment. But this week, we have someone on the outside. Her name is Madeline Olnick. She's a Sundance filmmaker, and she just shot us a boatload of footage. Check it out. The Best Short Films in the World Sundance Edition Part 2 is brought to you by... Mountains. Everyone's riding to the brunch at the Robert Redford Resort. If there was a bus accident, it would be a lot of directors would die, you know, so that which would be very sad. Oh yeah, I love the best short films in the world. You know, uh, it's funny you asked me that question uh, because I think they should get a Webby for for that show. You know, they should. There's so much spots for that show too. What do you think makes the best short films in the world? One of the things that I'm always looking into is the vision, a heart behind the short. It doesn't matter if it's an animated short, it's experimental, narrative, anything that it's unique, but I feel the guts of the person. It doesn't even matter the production value. Sometimes uh, the, the films could have you know, little problems in, in, in the technical aspect, but if there is something you know, strong about this vision, this world the person is trying to, you know, present to me. That is the, the, the kind of short that always attracts my imagination and my desire to show it to other people. Best Short Films in the World is an amazing show. I just... Uh... This is Lynn Shelton, who <laughs> wrote and directed Hump Day, which is a feature film premiering today at Sundance. And I, I just ran into her in the bus and I know her because she used to be in my plays. Are you excited heading into your premiere? A lot of nerves. A lot of nerves. Kind of disappointed. Did you? Ha did, did, is he? What do you want to ask? Just go ahead. Yes, is it? Tell, how do you make a whole feature? <laughs> um, perseverance. A lot of uh, I wanted to make a movie about a therapist who, lost, who loses her mind and caused the lives of her patients to unravel. Could you tell me how this works? I mean, what techniques you use? I don't deal with people who have reoccurring nightmares because that's too f***ed up. And for the same reason I don't deal with suicides because there's nothing you can say to a suicide. Um. Do you deal with people who no one likes them? Yes. And now the interview of a lifetime with Madeline Almick. You need to be crazy to be brilliant. Do you need to be mentally unstable to, to hit that higher level of, say, filmmaking or com comedic well, filmmaking? I would say or... for comedy, the desire to be that funny to be comedian level funny necessarily comes out of this certain low baseline of misery. I, I, I'm perfectly well adjusted, by the way. <laughs> that's I am good. Very fine. And my and in terms of your mental illness question, you were actually at Sundance before that's in right. 2006. Right. Why do you keep going? Give <laughs> give the other people a chance, you know. Oh, oh. <laughs> give them a chance to get in. What I really want to know is how are short filmmakers treated? Like, are they in a different bunk? 
No, know, no. The, I mean, the first of all, the, the festival or? and the people, the programmers are lovely, and you just they treat you so nicely, and it's so exciting and everything. There's this whole other thing that has nothing to do with the festival, which is the stress of going because of everyone else's expectations. And keep um, talking. I'm just gonna check. All right, on check. The, we uh, check on the hungry go man check. dinner. I got some dinner. I got some pasta over here. Oh wait, is it in the um? Is it in the? It's not in the microwave. The new generation of filmmakers are truly one man bands. That's right. You that's know. Right. But they shouldn't lose sight. They shouldn't let all that time at the computer right. make them lose sight of literature. One thing I just wanted to share, the results okay. of this important study. They did this study that showed that if when you sit in, in front of a computer for like a couple hours, the effect on your brain is similar to smoking a joint. If you ever notice when you're at the emails and yeah. all those things for a long time and you're like, Ugh. filmmaking has two sides to it. It's there's the tech side and there's the idea side. Yeah. And the audience shows up to see the ideas. And and yeah. don't don't uh, to get sweet, you know? Don't rot your brain out on this <laughs> computer box. Right. And now an update from the asshole filmmakers from last week's episode. The film went really well. There's lots of laughs. I've never seen it in a theater before, and it was fun seeing people laugh and seeing it on a big screen like that. The other films were very dull. Uh, big, long, artsy-fartsy thing about AIDS. Uh, some stuff about children getting into trouble. Very filmy films. Lots of slow-mo, lots of close-ups. Lots of bad acting, and you can't leave. My whole life is different now, and thank you so much for watching the best short films in the world. Sundance Edition.